Hey everybody, it's Scooters. Um, thank you for stopping by. We are doing an unboxing. Excuse the super messy room as I am leaving on a plane to go to Boston uh, in a few hours. So it's called Misdirection. It has nothing to do with the messy room. It's just my excuse. So we are unboxing, as you can tell by the title, the Nintendo Switch that everyone has been super hyped about. Lithium battery. Apparently, Target thinks this is a hot item because it says hot. I don't know why it says hot. I don't. I just didn't really understand. Um, the other thing, I do apologize. I do not have my other webcam. I usually have two webcams in order to do like the face and overhead cam situation. So this is me, another one of my not so great unboxings. Excuse me. Actually, this is actually a present someone that um, I haven't seen since Christmas. So, um, yeah, my cat always seems to like the bubble wrap stuff. So. Um, I know my microphone is not very good when I'm far away from the mic, so I'm going to try to keep it as close to my mouth as possible. While we do this wonderful unboxing, which I know is going to be not so glamorous since I'm so far away, or rather um, you're not going to be able to see much. So I'm going to try to hold as much as possible as I do my other crap, or not so great unboxings uh so you'll at least get to see everything that comes in it i really hope my nintendo switch isn't a dud because as you guys might know let me put this in a camera view as we all know that it's gonna be tempted bait for my cat um let's see if she actually does anything oh, oh, oh. Oh, testing the waters, it's gonna fall. It's 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 kind of set precariously on top of uh, that stand behind me, or the stand's gonna fall and crash, crash and crack my head, and and the box is be over. Okay, anyway, there we go. Okay, um, as you might know, there's a lot of duds out there with the Nintendo Switch. A lot of problems, just a lot of them. Um, first thing I notice about this box is, uh, it's interesting that the tab is here. So I'm assuming. I want you to open it this way. Normally you would think it'd be here, so you just lift it open, but I guess it's, to me it's a little backwards, but, but, uh, oh, it, oh, oh, okay, I just lost, <laughs> I was backwards, not that, this was the bottom, this is the top, I'm just stupid. Oh, let's look at the box before we open it, sorry, let's, let's look at the box. I, I forgot, we should probably show the box for those who want the full immersive unboxing experience. Um, here's the front, now that I learned. Cool little picture there. Um, a little bit of, you know, little gamey stuff here. Two-player stuff. You can see back here, a little mobile stuff. And then this, what I thought was the top, is really the bottom. And then, you know, all your gibberish down there. All right. So let's, let's actually open this as I do it back as I get. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, look at that. I did get the neon Joy-Cons, the red and the blue. That's what it looks like right here. So let's take a look at this. Let me just set this down. I know you won't be able to see everything, but... Each Joy-Con comes in their little baggie. That's kind of nice. Um, first impressions, feels like a like a controller. There are two buttons, there's an L here and an uh, LZ. Uh, just like the N64 Z trigger on the back, they call it the Z trigger. Instead of like the bumper or the R2, L2, instead they went with the Z. Um, and then on here, there are buttons, shoulder buttons, um, shoulder S, R, and S, left. I'm assuming, um, shoulder left and shoulder right. And then there's the connect button over here. Um, not sure if it comes charged already, but I think this is the start button possibly. And then there are some IR stuff on here. If IR, if IR, C, eh, um, not on this side, it's on the plus side. So that's pretty much the Joy-Con. It has a cool little groove over here, so you can hold on to it like, you know, this kind of grip. Trigger grip, I guess you would... No, nah, this is more trigger... I don't know what this is called. Uh, Joy-Con grip, if you will. I'm going to put these back because, unfortunately, I'm not going to be playing this. I thought I was going to take it to me on the plane, with me on the plane, and do kind of like a, a review of like how it how it's like to play on the pl airplane. Um, the issue with that is that uh, I, I, I don't have a game. <laughs> I didn't buy a game. Um, but anyway, so here's this, and this one has a little I, a little ring over here to show, like, power or something, connectivity, possibly. Um, the other one does not, seemingly. Same thing, SLSR, and then um, 
Z or R and, and uh, oh, ZR. Sorry, not not is LZ, but ZL. So you know R and L for them, right? And then of course the controller. This knob is um, it's they're they're kind of like not mirrored but uh, flipped, f mirrored and flipped. I don't know. So you know the other one has the um, thing up here, and then this one has it down here. So you're gonna be um, it's 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 similar when you uh, I guess no, this one's more in the middle, but when you flip this blue controller around, it's actually more on the right side or left side. So that's interesting. It's interesting when you when you play two-player games that someone's going to have to deal with a nub in the middle, whereas the other one has to deal with the nub on the left. Not sure if that would matter too much in games. It might, though. Um, here's the IR port on the bottom, um, just for... I don't know. I don't know. Just for stuff. It's it's for monitoring stuff, right? I don't know if there's, like, a, a accelerometer or whatever in here. All right, so those are the controllers. They look spiffy. They are pretty... Um, I think my camera does pick up the right, the true colors. They are pretty bright, loud, as some would say. Um, they are neon, so I mean, there's that. Okay, so here, let's look at the Switch itself. So here's the Switch itself, as you would say, with a nice little Nintendo Switch logo on the back. Nom! You see this? Nom, nom. Um, I don't want to mess around with it too much because I do want to end up putting a screen protector on it, but look at that. Here's my camera. Um, and then my, my monitor, but nice screen there. It's about, oh, I wish, I wish I was set up for this. I don't have my, I don't have my, um, I don't have, sorry, I don't have my uh, phone with me, so I can't really show you in a comparison for how big it is, but, uh, it's, it's fairly big. It's, it's like in between a, a, a mini, what's that, what's that, iPad mini and the, uh, and like a note or a, uh, uh, 7 plus S or 6 plus it's like in the middle of there so it's like you know it's not huge but it's definitely not small it's definitely not something you're gonna be carrying around in your pocket unless you have uh jinko jeans so here's the action of sliding this in actually i'll put it on the other side just so you guys can see it I don't get my fingerprints all over it. i'll clean it anyway when i do the screen protect thing i'll probably actually do that on another video just to show you my review of it but here we go the one i got here's the little switch click Kind of cool. Actually, let me put that. Um, and then I guess to take us off, you just there's a release button back here. Um, let me put that next to the camera so you guys can hear this. All nice click there, just to tell you that it is definitely connected. And I believe, um, I believe when you do hear the rails, if you want to look at them, um, if you do that during while it's on, it actually plays a, a sound, a sound file wave thing or whatever, where it goes and it makes that nice. Click sound here is USB-C, as you all know that uh, everyone's been adopting now. If my camera will actually focus, sorry, there it is. Um, so yeah, USB-C. I'm actually very happy they went USB-C because that is kind of like the way the industry is going, and it's nice because when you end up connecting this to the dock, you can really put it in any way you want, even though you know there is a front, but. Um, it's just nice for for universal you know universal universalities. You know what I'm trying to say. It's nice to be able to just plug in something either way. It doesn't matter if it's up down left or right. It just kind of goes in. All right. Um. So let's get to the bottom of the box. Sorry, I'm kind of putting everything back because I do want to save it in its box because I'm not going to be using this unfortunately just yet because I want my screen protector because a lot of people have been having a lot of issues without a screen protector and they're scratching it with the dock and this must be the dock down here. So let's go over there. So this is the uh, warning safety guidelines, blah, 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 who cares. Um, left side of the box is a nice HDMI cord. Obviously, usually too short for what you want to use it for. Uh, here's the brick, the AC brick itself um, with a USB-C bottom thingamajig. Be nice if you can actually use this for other USB-C things to charge them. Here's uh, the Joy-Con strap. Um, don't put this on the wrong way. Let me emphasize this. A lot of people have been having issues with these. Let's, let's just take a look at it and not not demonstrate the fail. But a lot of people have been um, not lining up the minus signs with the uh, the minus sign over here. So there are, this is made for this side of the controller, whereas the other one's made for the other one. So don't mix those up. Um, here's the minus sign, you know, up top, and here's the one. Um, down below. I don't know why it's not focusing. 
There we go. So here's the minus sign up top, down below, and you just kind of, you know, push that down and should click in like that. Spring loaded, a um, little bit of spring thing. And the locket, you actually push this thing up, I believe. So that is locked in place. You do use a shoulder release button over here to take it out, but you must pull this down in order to unlock it, the white tab right here, just to show you guys again. Here's the white tab. And you just pull it down and then you can hit the shoulder release button and it should, as long as I don't break it, <laughs> it should come right out. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. Don't want to mess it up. There we go. Oh, geez, that is scary. Um, but yeah, so you want to make sure this thing is not in its lock mode. Lock mode will put down two tabs to lock it in place. Um, there is a plus side on the other side, so you don't mix that up. See, there's a plus. Um, so this one could go on the other controller as well, but uh, you just don't want to do it this way. If you do it this way, which you can end up doing, I don't know why they did that, you could potentially um, screw it up pretty bad. So what happens if you um, don't put them on the right way? Uh, they get stuck and you have to use a tool or pry it off with your bare hands and you can look it up online. Um, there's a lot of interesting clips of people doing that wrong. So definitely make sure you pay attention to the plus and minuses because that could really, really save you a lot of time and frustration and potentially a Joy-Con controller. So, and they aren't that, they aren't that cheap. They are pretty expensive. I think these Joy-Con controllers go for about 30 bucks each or something like that. Something in, something pretty crazy. I want to keep this out because I know there is actually um, this middle piece here that are for the Joy-Con controllers. So let's put one, we'll put them in and I'll tell you what it kind of feels like. So, whoa, whoa, okay. So here's the left side and nice click there. And then let's put the right side in as well. Take this back out, excuse me. Um, nice piano gloss finish on the, on the, on the back. Fingerprint magnet um, finish. I like that, okay. Very easy to get in and out, um, or just to get in at least. I don't know about getting out, we'll see. Um, it feels, it feels nice. Uh, it's very light. Um, the one complaint I would have that I know other people complain about too, or have, have, uh, talked about, or at least, um, observed, is that, um, if I, let me get a pl PlayStation controller out here. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, is this one? Yes. When you hold a PlayStation controller, um, this is, I mean, the Pro Controller is going to be more like the PlayStation Controller, but um, the only thing that really pushes into your hand are are these, the side grips, and they kind of push in right in here, right in that pocket, you know, between the fatty part of the thumb and the palm, just like that nice pocket area. That's what we're used to. We as in people who play a lot of console games. Um, because of these rounded edges down here, which they obviously need for the controller just to hold it, you know, this way and stuff like that. Um, you do get this part in the in the meaty part in here. If I can show you when you hold it, it does kind of go right into that in that meaty part of the hand. But the problem is, um, so does this. This pushes actually. This is in the pocket, and then this part pushes right on the meaty part. So it feels weird. It doesn't hurt by any means, but it just feels like there's more. There's something that's kind of um, protruding out. So. Uh, very easy to get this one out of this controller with the shoulder release buttons. Very, very, very easy. Uh, that's that's nice. <laughs> I'm happy that these aren't as much as a pain to to remove that um, compared to the uh, Joy-Con top things. I don't know what they're called. Okay, and then the last part of this thing is the dock, as they call it, the switch switcher, as some people have called it. Um, dust bag, bubble wrap. That's nice. Uh, a lot of complaints about this dock. I thought it looked really good, like the uh, build quality looked good, and um, it seemed smart, but it has a nice little uh, Nintendo Switch branding there. I like that. And then the Nintendo logo here, and it says HDMI, just to tell you that that's how you connect it. And then what's nice is you just pop this open, and boom, cable management with like a USB hub, basically, where this is USB-C to AC adapter, which is a USB-C cord. Um, USB 2.0 probably, or 3.0, 2.0, I don't know. It's blue, 3.0, or 3.1 even. HDMI out, probably 3.0, right? And um, I don't know what this is for. I'm assuming this is for, oh, that's for the AC adapter. No, I don't know what that's for. Maybe a heat thing? I'm not too sure um, why that's there. Uh, but USB-C on the bottom, you can kind of see it over there. 
and then um, you just route all your cables nicely here and it comes out this side. I think that's a really good design, honestly. Um, but other than that, that, nice little rubber feet on the bottom. Now, the one thing that you guys should definitely watch out for, they do have a, red, a rubber grommet type thing right here, as well as over here. Not really a grommet, but a pad, which is nice. So it kind of keeps your um, Nintendo Switch from touching on the sides. But do keep in mind that a lot of people have been having issues with not really bird edges, but just when they're wobbling their, their Switch in here, they, they scratch it and scuff it. And the screen on the Switch is actually plastic and not gorilla glass, apparently. Why the cover? I don't know why they did that, but um, yeah, it's not it's not good. There's a hair in this. Was this my? I don't know. That's weird. Probably my hair. But um, definitely pay attention to that and be careful for those who did buy a Switch and um, haven't really played with the dock much or whatever, or don't know about that. A lot of videos online. I'm not gonna do it, obviously, to demonstrate. But um, do keep in mind. And the way to fix that, you can put a microfiber cloth over, you know, one side of it. So always make sure you put it in the screen side on the cloth. That way, you know, you don't really scratch anything. Or you can always buy a screen projector, which I would probably end up doing. I'm, I did already. I'm actually buying a different one. Um, I bought a plastic one as well as a glass screen protector, which I haven't gotten yet. I haven't gotten either one. So I'm going to wait until I get those before I really start throwing it around and being abusive to it like I probably will be, inevitably. But yes, definitely keep in mind that the Switch is unfortunately for a mobile device not as rugged as you would think it should be. Uh, but then again, I, I can't say too much because I haven't actually gotten to try it. So once I do, I will definitely uh, make a review on this channel. So if you guys are wondering about my Switch experience, stay tuned. And I won't have, unfortunately, I won't have an airplane review as in like how it works on airplane, but I will be getting a game today. Um, but I don't think I'll get in time before I leave on the plane. And then also, uh, I will be going on airplane again. I travel quite a bit, so I'll be going on airplane again. Let's see, it is March, so April, May, June in three months, I believe. So uh, I don't know it's a while, but um, I will definitely do a review of it, like just using it in general first, like, you know, how I feel like using it, like just maybe in the car or like, you know, on the road, traveling outside, and then I'll probably end up doing another review for airplane stuff, so. Um, and I will be streaming, so if you guys want to see me stream either... I don't know if I'll stream Zelda Breath of the Wild, just because it's pretty late now. I haven't really done anything. Um, but I will definitely try and stream that game or, or, or other games, whatever comes out. Mario in December? Ugh, so yeah, if you guys want to see me stream any Twitch or t Switch stuff on Twitch, uh, definitely check out my channel, twitch.tv slash cooters. That's pretty much it for the unboxing. I hope you guys enjoy it. That was the Nintendo Switch, as Chumba says. Hi. Let's see. Chumba wants to say hi before I go. Guys, thanks for dropping by. Do remember the too big, do good, and do you. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.